Hallelujah. I'm excited to preach this message today. It's really burning in my heart. Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 through 3. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by the elders, for by it the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. Somebody say amen. amen. The last phrase of verse 3 ought to be put on a big sign in every lab, every workshop, every chemistry lab at JPL and NASA and everywhere else. They need to read that every day and realize that the things which are seen were not made of the things which are visible. Then they'll quit looking for hydrogen to be God. <laughs> Amen. The things which are seen were not made with the things which are visible, okay? Father, we thank you this morning for your Holy Spirit. Touch your people in a powerful way. And all the saints said, Amen. Amen. You can be seated. I want to say to all of you today that you are a giant killer. You're a dragon slayer. You can wipe out the devil with one swipe of your Holy Ghost fist. You're more than you think you are. And I want to tell you how much you have in Christ today. That you can be everything God says you can be. You can be everything that God put in this book. You don't have to pick yourself up by your bootstraps. All you have to do is do one thing and that is to believe. Everybody say believe. Amen. You know, by faith, we, re we see the promises of God. You know, the Lord spoke this to my heart, and he said, faith is never about where you are. It's about where you're going. So don't talk to me about where you are. Don't talk to me about your kids that are strung out. Don't talk to me about your financial situation. Because faith in God is never about where you are. It's about where you're going. By faith, we see it. By faith, we see the promise of God out ahead of us. And I like this thought too. Faith is always about your future. It never involves your past. I said faith is always about the future. It never involves your past. The Holy Ghost will never bring up your past to you. If anything is brought up out of your past, it's the devil. Know this. It's the devil. He's the accuser of the brethren. And things even that God has forgiven us over, the devil will bring up from our past. If you are in Christ, you are a new person. You're a new creature. Creature, You're a new creation in God. God has done great things in you and for you. And faith is not about your past. It's about what's lying in front of you, the road ahead. And the road ahead of the righteous Proverbs 4.18 says, gets brighter and brighter into the perfect day. What does that mean? It means once I take hold of Jesus' hand and I start walking forward, every day gets brighter. Every day gets better. Every day I see the promise. Every day I'm closer because I'm on a destination. Somebody say amen. You're on a destination. You're going on a journey towards a destination. The word destination has destiny in it. We all have a destiny and that is to ultimately live with the Lord Jesus Christ forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. We got to remember this contest we are in is not about the here and now. It's not about how I feel and about circumstantial problems. It's about eternity. It's about forever. That what we're fighting for is forever. Somebody say amen. Everybody say forever. You're going to live forever. You're going to live forever. When you pass out of this body, you're going to be forever locked in eternity, either in heaven or in hell. The battle that we are in is forever. It's not about the here and the now. Don't trade eternity for the here and the now. But believe that God has good things in front of us. And the path of the righteous and the just gets brighter and brighter going into the perfect day. Because we're not reincarnationists. We, are not, we don't belong to those who believe that we go in a constant circle with reincarnation we keep coming back and coming back and if I don't do good in this life I come back as a crab a mouse or a flea no I'm not going to come back I'm on a one way journey going through eternity's door someday somebody say a good amen for this now folks I'm excited and I expect you to get excited so whether you're receiving this or not act like you are come on clap your hands and smile and look up at the pastor and say oh you're preaching good preacher preach it 
I need a little help today. Can I hear an amen? amen. Hallelujah. You know, you know this, this thing is, is all about what we believe. It's all about what we see. It's all about our behavior. God has us in trials and tests, but it's not about where you are today. It's about where you are going. Somebody say amen. The Bible says by faith we, well, the song says we see it afar. And by faith we see the promise of God. We see where we're going. We're not on a circle, on a treadmill. We're on a journey. We started out with Jesus years ago and we're on a journey. And the end of the road is heaven. And we're going forward. We're going forward. We're going forward. You see, every day that I live, the outward man is perishing. The inward man is renewed day by day. The outward man is getting old and ugly, wrinkles, bursitis, uh, arthritis has come and paid a visit, and every other itis you can imagine, I'm starting to get it, and I'm looking old and ugly, but it doesn't matter, because on the inside, I'm getting prettier and prettier. On the inside, I have a treasure. I'm going to be in heaven forever, and God's going to lock me in a 25-year-old body with no pot belly, no gray hair, no receding hairline, hallelujah, no caps on my teeth. No cavities. Somebody say amen. That's where I'm going. I said that's where I'm going. The devil wants to derail people by getting you off detoured on trials and tests that don't amount to anything anyway. Paul called his tests light affliction. We need to call what we're going through light affliction. Call it light affliction. You're going through light affliction. If Paul getting stoned and beaten with rods and shipwreck, we went through light affliction, then we can't even call what we're going through affliction. But every day we're getting closer to the journey. Every day we're getting closer. How do little children act? How do little children act? When, when little children know that birthday is coming, isn't it exciting? Man, you get closer and closer, and you know your big day is coming. Now, when I grew up, I had a misfortune of having a three-year-old brother, three years younger than me, born almost the same time. My birthday is September the 19th, and you'll know that because the post office will be closed and the bank shut down. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> That's a joke. Amen. Come on. Stay with me. And, and, but, you know... My brother is around the 1st of October, October the 2nd. And when we were growing up, you know, we got ready to get the cake and ha let me have my special day. And my little brother would pitch a fit and fall on the floor and cry and scream, I want my birthday too. I want my cake. I want my gifts. I want to have it. And mom said, oh, he's pitching a fit. We better let him have his birthday along with yours. And I always felt robbed because I had to have it on my little brothers. And we always had to celebrate together. And he, then you know, I'd get a shirt and he'd steal it and want to wear it because it looks so cool, you know? And it was just amazing how we grew up, you know, with both celebrating the same birthday. But I remember how excited I would get closer and closer to that day. Brothers and sisters, that is no different. I said it's no different. I said it's no different than the eternal realm that God has locked us into eternity. He's put in His Holy Spirit in our hearts. He's given us an inheritance in heaven that fades not away. He's recorded our name in the Lamb's Book of Life and sent the Holy Spirit to help us get through. We all have an angel assigned from heaven to help us. We have 66 books in this Bible to help us get through. We have a church. We have a Holy Ghost pastor. We have the Holy Spirit among us. We have a community of believers and we can make it because we're on a journey with a destination. Pick up your head. Quit feeling sorry for yourself. Get off your pity pot and begin to square your shoulders and say the Lord is with me. The Lord is my strong tower. The Lord is my righteousness. I shall not be moved and then begin to believe that God has a destination point. Every day that I live, though the outward man is perishing, I realize it's getting better and better and better. I don't care about this body. It's going to the grave anyway. I don't, I'm not going to waste money on Botox. I'm not going to waste money on plastic pr pr procedures and, and plastic surgery and, and prop it up and, and liposuction out the waistline and, and work on all of that stuff. Hey, let it bag. Let it sag. Let it fall. I don't care anyway. It's headed for the grave. I'm going to get a new body. I'm going to get a new body. I'm headed for a destination. And that destination
nation is a city whose builder and maker is God. I want you to know it's time for the church to rise up and be what God said we are and believe in the promise of God. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap. Amen. I want you to be excited about the journey. I want you to be excited about where you're headed. Every day that I live, every day that I live, I'm closer to my journey, my destination point. I'm closer to heaven. I'm not only closer to heaven, but I'm much closer to the promises that God has dropped in my heart. The promises corporately that he's made to this body of believers. The promises that he has made to many of you through a dream, a vision, a word. You've gotten up in the night, your tears have stained your pillow. And you've gone to a secret place and prayed. And the Holy Ghost has whispered great truth into your heart. And given you a vision of what he's going to do. You see this church is not like every other church. We fast and we pray. And because God has been able to call us to prayer and to obedience. We have a a wonderful promise hanging over our head. In fact, it's right out in the little near future. It's just just ahead of us. Just ahead on the next turn, you're going to run into the power of God. Just to Ned, on the right turn of this path we're on, you're going to run into the glory of God. You're going to see power like you've never seen it. You're going to see God like you've never seen Him before because God has made promises and God is not a man that He would lie to the Son of Man that He should repent. If he said it, he will do it. God has us on a journey with a destination point. Not only heaven, but glory just ahead. Turn to somebody and tell them there's glory just ahead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say it like you mean it. Come on. Tell them there's glory just ahead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when you have faith, you see faith is something. Faith is like a, a, you know, I, I used to, have a lot of lunches with Brother Tucker, and we talk about faith because that's his specialty, you know. My specialty is Holy Ghost. His specialty is faith. You get Holy Ghost and faith together, and we have our own party. We sit for three hours and talk. I mean, we sat so long that the waitress would change shifts, and another one would come up and say, how long y'all been here? Do you need something? No, oh, just some more water. We're getting kind of dry, so much talk. And, and we would talk about things, and he would say, you know, faith is a realm that you live in, it's kind of like a, it, it, it's kind of like a, a whole realm that God gives to a person when you enter the realm of faith. The way I can tell you about it physically would be if you go to Disneyland. How many of you know Disneyland's got sections to it? You know, when you go into Frontier Town and you go into the the castle. I don't know what you call that, Fantasy Land. Yeah, Fantasy Land. You go into Fantasy Land and you go into Frontier Land and you go into Future land or whatever and they got these themes and and that's what God that's where God lives God lives in the faith realm he lives in faith land somebody say man and I got news for you if you want anything from God if you want anything from God you know what you have to do you have to use faith you have to enter into that that kingdom that realm that mindset of faith You have to believe it more than you believe your circumstances or more than you believe anything else. You have to believe that God is with you and that God has ordained things in your life. And you have to say them and confess them. And you enter into a realm. And and in that realm, you begin to hold on to what God has said. Somebody say amen. You know, it says here that faith's evidence, that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. The the first description of faith is its substance. It is substance. And in Webster's Dictionary, the first definition of substance means essential nature or essence. The essential nature or essence. You see, God doesn't respond to us because we're in need. God responds to us because we use faith. Because God lives in the kingdom of faith. And if you're not in faith, you're not in God. If you're not in faith, you can't receive from God. Everything God does... He does because of the kingdom of faith. When you enter into faith, you enter into God. When Rahab was a whore, a harlot, living on the wall of Jericho, and she said, I believe God has given you this city. She entered into faith. She walked through the doors of God's kingdom and said, I take hold of it. And even though she was a prostitute, God honored her. Somebody say amen. 
Hallelujah. So when you have faith and you speak it out of your mouth, you can't even get into God's kingdom without this. If you will confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God is raising from the dead, you will be saved. How did you get in the kingdom? You said it. Say it. Say it. Say it. Say it. When you say it, then you enter into God's kingdom. Somebody say amen. And the reverse works with the devil. The devil will cause circumstances to happen. The devil will provoke you. He'll hit you. He'll shoot fiery darts at you. He'll kick you on the shins. He'll slap you in the face. Your ears will be ringing. And the devil will say, come on, come on, say it, say it, say it, say it, say it, say it, boom. And he's provoking you. What is he doing? He's trying to get the words to come out of your mouth that contradict the kingdom of God. That contradict the faith realm of God. That what God has already spoken to you. What God has already said over your life. And you have to be so stubborn. You have to be so convinced. You have to be so believing. You have to say, devil, I don't care what you slap me with. I don't care what circumstance you bring. I don't care what you say or what you do. God has already spoken and I'm going going to hold on to the Lord. Somebody say amen. When you do that, you bring heaven down. You make angels go to war. You bring the Holy Spirit into the picture. God stands up and God honors you with honor. God honors you with miracles, signs, and wonders because you show up with your faith. It's time the church rise up with our faith and begin to say what God said. God knows we speak the devil's words enough. We speak what the devil is saying enough. Enough. We talk about our pains and our problems and our issues and our sins and our problems all week long. But how, when was the last time that you took a week and said, Lord, I'm going to speak your word this week. I'm going to speak what God said. I'm going to proclaim the promises of God. I'm not going to let one negative thing come out of my mouth. For the substance is the essential nature of who God is. And the evidence is an outward sign, a proof, a testimony submitted to the cause of Christ and it determines the truth of whether or not you receive anything or you receive nothing. No wonder Jesus when he would heal the sick, he would ask them hey, do you believe? Do you believe I can do this thing? Do you believe I can heal you? Do you believe? Do you believe? Blind Bartimaeus, do you believe? Do you believe? And the word had to come out of the man's mouth. Yes, Lord, I believe. Even the man that had the son that was thrown in the fire, Jesus walked up to him and said, Do you believe that I can cast the devil out of this boy? He said, Lord, I brought him to your disciples and they could do nothing with him. He's a hard case. Demons are in him and they try to kill him and commit suicide through him. But Lord, even though I've seen this failure through your disciples, I believe, Lord, that even now, whatever you ask, God will give it to you. And when he said that, open up the nature of God, the power of God, the realm of the supernatural. And what did God do? Jesus cast the devil out of the boy. Somebody say amen. When Jesus got to Lazarus' tomb four days late, Martha and Mary said, Lord, if you'd have been here four days ago, we could have believed you. But Jesus could not. Listen to me. He could not heal Lazarus and bring him back until he got faith. Somebody has to walk through the door of faith. Somebody has to say, I don't care what the doctor said. I don't care what the circumstances are. I'm going to hold your hand and walk through the door of faith. And when you do that, you enter into a different realm. You enter into a different kingdom. You enter into a place where God lives and God will do everything for you. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap. Show, to show you Martha's misplaced faith. Do you believe I can heal your brother? I believe in the last resurrection that you will heal him. She still wasn't in the door of faith. Because faith is always in the now. It's not in the future. Well, when God gets ready, I believe God will do it. No. God's ready this morning. Your world can be changed. Your world can turn on, its, on a dime. It's up to you. You say, well, I believe when God gets ready, He'll do it. You're never going to get it. Jesus said, Martha, I'm the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he is dead, yet shall he live. Martha, what do you think? Even so, 
Even so, Lord, let it happen. Somebody say amen. First she said, Lord, if you'd have been here four days ago, I know you could have raised Lazarus. That was past tense faith. Then he said, I'm the resurrection. She said, well, I believe in the future resurrection you can do it. He said, I'm the resurrection and the life. She said, okay, I believe now. Then she stepped through the door of faith 